Hello, welcome back to Scribe Life. In the previous video, we had a look at the second grouping of minim or minim letters, and in this video, I'll be running you through the ascender letters, which consist of the L, F, B, H, K, and an unusual one, uh, the S ligature, which I'll talk about in more detail in a moment. But let's start off with the L. So, the L is formed, I'll start here in the middle, just because it's easier for me to reach. The L is formed by starting with your nib at 45 degrees, as per usual, at the top of your ascender line, and you pull down into a slight curve, and then str straighten out, and pull straight until you reach just below, well, just above the bottom of the X height, and then you form a slight diamond shape by pulling diagonally down and to the right like we've done with the terminating strokes for most of these letters and then if you like you can pull your nib up so that it's just the corner of the nib touching of the paper and flick out into the hairline and then an additional thing you can do for the L which is common in some of the a lot of the ascender letters is to have your nib held vertically and then pull down and slightly to the right to form this forked section at the top there. So we'll do that one more time just so you can get an idea of what it looks like. Just to make sure I don't overload the nib. I've been doing that a lot lately. You get a lot of blobby letters. So you pull dias into a slight curve and straighten out to almost the bottom of the X height. Diagonal, twisting the pen to form the hairline, and then holding the pen vertically. Pull up, just draw the ink up a little bit, and then slightly to the right and diagonally. So that's the L. Next letter that we'll have a look at is the F. The F is fairly similar to the L. Start with that same slight curve and straighten out until you reach almost the bottom of the X height. Pull into the diamond and then flick up. You can see here I've I've gone and overloaded the nib. It's gotten a little bit blobby. See, so, but it's a learning. It's a learning uh, process, and even I'm still learning. <laughs> I don't have any magic tips or secrets on how to get perfect nib loading. It's just a matter of just getting a feel for it. Um, sometimes I'm not too bad. Sometimes I'm not too good, and it really depends on the ink. Um, and how much ink you load, and the kind of even the kind of ink that you're using, um, whether you've ordered it down or not. There's a whole lot of factors that might come into play, and I won't get into it now because I'm digressing. Anyway, so with the F, instead of leaving it like this, we pull diagonally down to the right, and you can flick up slightly, and then again, totally up to you. You can pull a hairline. And then for the crossbar, you start one nib width from the back of that main vertical, and then just pull horizontally until it's more or less in line with that diagonal at the top. So I'll do that one more time. You can see now that the ink flows a little bit nicer. It's not the pen's not too overloaded. That's what it should ideally look like. So that's the F. The next letter we'll look at is the B. Now the B is moving back towards sort of that same forked section here. I'll show you what I mean. I'm keeping the ink all over me. <laughs> you get used to that as well. Inky hands. 
you don't get ink on your hands, so when you're doing calligraphy, you're not doing it right. Well, you're probably doing it wrong because you'll get ink all over your work, but it's very hard not to get it there. <laughs> I keep I keep nattering away at the moment. I don't know why. I'm in a bit of a chatty mood today. Anyhow, so we start with that same slight curve that straightens until it reaches almost the bottom of the X height. Diagonal, pulling slightly to the right, and you want to leave it a little bit longer than you normally do for the terminating strokes with these other letters because um, you'll see in a second. You come back here, you start at the top of the X height, and then you pull diagonally into the right again. You flick up slightly if you want, and then pull another vertical that reaches down to that first diamond and that's why you leave this a little bit longer because you need to have the space in there that forms the B and then again just quickly do this Oh, so that's what the B looks like we'll do one more just so you can get an idea of what it looks like slight curve straightening until you reach almost the bottom of the X height, pull diagonally to the right, second diagonal right, pull up slightly if you wish, and then vertical that joins the bottom diagonal, and then the optional fork descender. The next letter that we're going to do is the H, which is formed quite similarly to the B, but instead of this extended section so that the bowl of the B meets with the second vertical, you'll be using that terminating stroke and I'll show you precisely why in a moment. So you start with a slight curve, falling straight, ah, see I've gone and overloaded the pen again. terminating stroke and this is why we have the terminating stroke not the extended stroke because when you do this next diagonal and then pull down you want it to just go slightly below the X height and just curve down but you don't want it to meet with that bottom diagonal because otherwise you'll end up looking like you formed a more ornate B and you'll get your letters confused so that's why we use the shorter terminating stroke there. So I'll show you one more time what it's meant to look like. Slight curve that straightens out. Short terminating stroke. Emphasis on short. Longer diagonal. And pulling down to the second vertical. Which sort of curves down slightly below the X height. And then, if you wish, again, the optional fork to send out. The next letter we'll look at is the K. The K is possibly the trickiest of the ascender letters, but you'll soon get the hang of it. So, again, starting from the top of the ascender line, slight curve that pulls down. terminating diagonal and then you want to start the next stroke sort of about two nib widths from the top of the X height and let's say roughly two nib widths you'll get an eye for it when you practice and you pull up towards the top of the X height and then you sort of want to pull this sort of crescent shape I guess so you just sort of sweep your nib in a kind of semicircular um, shape and then you pull down so that it meets with that ascender again and then you pull horizontally and then down and then you pull a slight curve at the bottom
The good thing about this fork descender is that if you've got a bit of a wobbly line like I just did there, you can easily correct some of your mistakes. I'll show you how that works one more time. This is based on the uh, the uh, Macclesfield alphabet book. Um, there are variations in the X, the Zoe, and the K letters. You can sometimes do a more diagonal kind of line, but that's totally up to you. I'm just using this one because it's a little bit more compact, and I personally just prefer the look of that one in certain contexts. So we'll just do that one more time. Slight curve that straightens out to almost the bottom of the X height. Diamond terminal. Two nib widths from the bottom, the top of the X height, pull up and to the right diagonally. Slight sort of semi, mini semicircle crescent stroke. Pull back towards the ascender horizontal and then vertical curving slightly and then you can pull your pen into that hairline and then again with the optional fork descender. Now the next letter and the final letter in this video that I'm going to do is the long S or S ligature which looks sort of like the F I guess, well, close to the L, it's a mixture of the two. You start with that same curve to straight, and then the terminating diamond. But instead of pulling a crossbar, or anything like that, or a, uh, well, it's, yeah. Instead of a crossbar, what you do is you have a, what we call a thorn, which you do by starting one nib width from the back of the vertical ascender and then pull in a slight curve until it meets like that and then on the top here you pull diagonally into the right and it looks a bit like an F but this is actually a separate letter and what it was used for is uh, it, at the beginning and in the middle of some words if you've ever seen it before um, this is an S, so if you're doing a double S, you'd have the ligature S, and then you'd have the regular S, so that would be two S's. And this is also used at the beginning of letters that have an S. Um, it's used to save space, and it, so and I just think it looks rather nice. So I just thought I'd show you in case you wanted to have a play around with it yourself. I'll do it one more time and then that should be it for the episode. And you start one nib width from the back and then pull into the thorn. So that's it for this lesson. I hope you, you enjoyed that. Just practice it yourself. Have a bit of a play around with it. And then when you're familiar with all of these, you can move on to the irregular letters. And I'll see you in the next video doing that. Until then, keep scribbling.